This is part 87 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to display delete confirmation. At the moment, we are on list users view. When we click any of these delete buttons against any of these users, the respective user record will be deleted straight away without any sort of confirmation. Since delete is a distractive operation, it's always better to display a confirmation before actually deleting the underlying database record. And that's what we'll be doing in this video. In fact, we'll discuss how to display two types of delete confirmation. Here is the first type. When we click delete, we want to display this browser confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete user? And in this message, we also want to include the user username that we are trying to delete. In this case, we are trying to delete this user with the username abc at prigimtech.com. So in the message, we also have that user username. And then on this confirmation, if we click OK, the respective user record should be deleted. If we click cancel, nothing should happen. This is very easy to implement. So let's flip over to Visual Studio. Here is our list users view and the delete button is right here. So on this button, let's include on click event handler the value for this is return confirm confirm is javascript function and the confirmation message that we want to display is are you sure you want to delete user and we also want to display the user username and to get the user username we use the username property on this user loop variable so at user dot username let me format this a bit so we can see the complete code. This confirm JavaScript function either returns true or false depending on whether we clicked on the OK button or cancel button on this confirmation window. If we click OK, the confirm function returns true. If we click cancel, it returns false. If a value of true is returned, then the form is submitted to the server and the respective user record is deleted. If it returns false, nothing happens. Let's save our changes and quickly test this functionality. Notice. Now, when we click the delete button, we see the browser confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete user? And then we also have the username displayed. If we click cancel, nothing happens. The user record is not deleted. If I click OK, the confirm function returns true. The form is submitted and this respective user record will be deleted. There we go. The respective user record is deleted. These days, most people do not like this browser confirmation dialog because there is context switching involved to a different window. So at the moment, we are working on this list users window. And when we click this delete button, all of a sudden, there is a context switch from this window to this confirmation window. And most users these days do not like this context switching. Instead, they want something in line, maybe something like the following. When this delete button is clicked, we want to display this inline confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete in a pair of buttons? Yes and no. If we click yes, the form should be pushed back to the server and the respective user record should be deleted. If we click no, the user record should not be deleted and we want to hide this message along with these two buttons and then display the delete button back. We don't need the browser confirmation dialog anymore. So let's delete this on click attribute. And let me also format this a bit so the delete button fits on one line. Now, we need three buttons, delete, yes and no. I'm going to change the text on this button to yes because when we click the yes button, that's when we want the form to be submitted and the respective user record deleted. So let's change the text here to yes. In addition to yes, we also need no button. For that, let's include an anchor element and I'm going to set the href attribute to hash and to style this anchor element as a button, let's use the bootstrap btn and btn-primary classes and the text on the button is no. In addition to these two buttons, we also want to display this message, are you sure you want to delete? For that, let's include a span element just above this s button and the message that we want is, are you sure? you want to delete. We want to show or hide these three elements as one unit, that is the message SNO buttons. So let's wrap them with another div element. Actually, let's change this to span. 
At this point, we have the HTML required for these three elements. That is the message, are you sure you want to delete? And these two buttons, yes and no. We also need this delete button. For that, let's include another span element. Inside this, let's include an anchor element, set the href attribute to hash, and then use the bootstrap btn and btn-danger classes. And the text on the button is delete. At this point, let's save our changes and take a look at the browser to see what we've got so far. On the initial page load, we don't want to display these three elements, that is the confirmation message, are you sure you want to delete, and these two buttons, yes and no. For that, on the span element, let's set style equals display colon none. Notice, now we don't see those three elements on the initial page load. When we click the delete button, that's when we want to display the confirmation message along with yes and no buttons. And when we click the no button, we want to hide these three elements and then display the delete button back. So to dynamically toggle the visibility of these elements, let's provide an ID for both these span elements. Let's call this span, delete span, and this one, confirm delete span. At the moment, on our list users page, we've got one, two, three, four users. And if we view the page source, let me zoom this in a bit. And if we scroll down for the first user, we see we've got a span element with ID delete span and another one here with ID confirm delete span. We'll have this pair of span elements for the next user as well. Notice here, we have delete span and confirm delete span. The same IDs will be duplicated for every user. We want to make sure these IDs are unique. For that, to this static text confirm delete span, let's append the respective user ID. So underscore at user dot ID. Let's do the same with delete span as well. I have already refreshed this page. So if we take a look at the ID of the span elements, notice the unique user ID is appended to the static text confirm delete span. And the same is true for delete span as well. And this happens for every user. So the IDs are now guaranteed to be unique. Now, when we click this delete button, we want to display this confirmation message along with these two buttons. And when we click no, we want to hide these three elements and then display the delete button again. For this, we need a JavaScript function. I'm going to include that function in this custom script.js file. This file is within the JS folder and this folder is in www root folder. So within our custom script.js file, let's include a JavaScript function. Let's call this function confirm delete. It's going to take two parameters. The first parameter is this unique user ID. In a bit, we'll see how we are going to use this user ID. For now, let's call the parameter unique ID. The second parameter is a Boolean parameter. We use this to determine if the user clicked delete or no. If they click the delete button, we pass true for that parameter. If they click no, we pass false. So let's call the parameter is delete clicked. The first thing that we want to do inside this function is compute the IDs for delete span and confirm delete span. If we take a look at the pattern they have, they have this literal text, either delete span or confirm delete span with an underscore. And to that, we are appending the unique user ID. And we are already passing the unique user ID as a parameter. So the ID for delete span is the literal text delete span with an underscore, and to this, we want to append the incoming unique ID. And the same is true even for the confirm delete span. Now, if this delete button is clicked, we want to hide this delete span and show this confirm delete span. So for that, if we use the incoming parameter, is delete button clicked? If the delete button is clicked, we want to hide this delete span element. So for that, let's use the jQuery ID selector, which is hash, and the ID is present in the variable delete span.
On this, we call the jQuery hide function. After we hide the delete span, we want to show the confirm delete span. So let's use the jQuery ID selector once again. And the ID is present in the variable confirm delete span. And on this, we call the jQuery show function. Else, we want to do the opposite. So if this parameter is delete clicked is false, that means the user has clicked this no button. So we want to hide this confirm delete span and display this delete span. So for that, let's include else block and do the opposite. Notice we are showing the delete span and hiding the confirm delete span. Our next step is to load this custom script.js file when this list users view is rendered. There are several ways we can do this. We are going to use the script section that we have defined in our layout view. So if we take a look at our layout view and scroll all the way down, Notice here we have a section called scripts and we are going to use this section to inject this custom script.js file into our list users view. We discussed sections in detail in part 29 of this ASP.NET Core tutorial. On this list users view, we want to define the content for this scripts section. So scroll all the way down to the bottom of the view. At section the name of the section is scripts. Using the script section, all we want to do is load this custom script.js file. So from the JS folder, let's drag and drop it into our scripts section. One last thing that is left to do is call this confirm delete function whenever we click this delete button or this no button. So on our list users view, let's find the delete button. It's right here. On click of this button, we want to call confirm delete function. It takes two parameters. The first parameter is the unique user ID. The second parameter is a boolean parameter and this parameter tells us if the delete button is clicked or not. And here we are clicking the delete button. So let's pass a value of true. When this no button is clicked, Again, we want to call this confirm delete function, but instead of passing a value of true, we want to pass a value of false. Let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now when we click delete, we see the delete confirmation. When we click no, nothing happens. On the other hand, when we click yes, the respective record is deleted. Let's do that again with this user. When we click delete, we get the confirmation. Click no, nothing happens. If we click yes, the respective record is deleted. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.